Hi guys, Somal Arora here and welcome to my showreel and thank you for choosing to spend the next few minutes watching some of my work. But the first thing that you might have noticed about the showreel is the fact that it looks just a tad bit longer than all the other showreels out there. But there's a very good reason for that, or so I think at least. You see, I don't think you can really judge any talent, be it a presenter or a commentator or a cricketer or even a pro wrestler by watching some of their highlights for a few minutes. In the world of pro wrestling, it's more about storytelling in your match. In the world of cricket, it's more about how you construct your innings. And the same can be said about the world of broadcasting and commentating. You've got to mix the two of them in and see which way it goes. And that's why this, this one is not two or three minutes long as it normally is. This one is a bit longer. But to make your life a little bit easier, I have enabled YouTube chapters. So you can switch over to the segment that you really want to watch. Be it my commentary work, be it my presenting work, be it my voiceovers or the other ventures that I have worked on. So with that said, I'm not going to waste any more time time right here. Go on, watch some of my work and I hope you really enjoy it. And if you did, I shall see you right at the very end. The drama, the action, the speed, the technology that has been pushed to all the new levels, a combination of all the factors that brings together and presents one masterpiece. It's something really special. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the land of the rising sun. It's time for round six of the Porsche Sport Carrera Cup. We are properly getting down to the business end of this incredible championship. But before we speak about the racing, we sadly have to touch upon a very soft subject. Unfortunately, a friend of ours in the world of motorsport has left us doing exactly what he loves to do. A sad, sad day. But Jason Dupasquier has died after his injuries at the Italian GP. Today is going to be about honouring him, about presenting a show with such great racing that lives up to his memory, that shows us exactly the beauty of racing, that helps us have a moment of peace and happiness in a day where things have been so dark. This one is for Jason Dupasquier. And now in his memory, let's focus on the race this one because here, Things are going to get really exciting. Suzuka, a circuit where heroes are born, where legends are made, where every single motorsport fan has seen incredible stories happening over the years. Be it the story of Senna or Prost, be it the story of Sebastian Vettel winning, or even, for that matter, of Hamilton showing his greatness. This track has played home to so many great memories and it's one of every single tracks in the championship that has that sort of status. Every single one of them properly iconic in the world of motorsport and we are getting down to the grand finale here at Sebring in a couple of weeks time that will be absolutely intense to watch. Leiper Esports sending something on the second RSR car. He's going to make something, is he? He's not quite another four to finish, is it? For P number nine at the end of this race, who's going to get it? It is Leipert! <laughs> wow! Wow! What a finish! If you want to know, ladies and gentlemen, what Ivra competition is all about, to show them race number two, of the CET MP round, the round number 12 of the IRA GT Sprint Series is opening, opening series. This is race, this is what racing should do to us. Should get our heart rate pumping, should get us sweating, should get us exciting, jumping off our chair, unpredictable, you don't know what's gonna happen next, you're getting goosebumps on your hand, you're fumbling up your words with excitement. This is what racing should be all about. You're emotionally invested in this battle and it is satisfying. A deep breath in and out. This is the end of the series, ladies and gentlemen. Can you believe it? It would have been so, so much better for CX Approach it Black and oh. there's a crash! That's the second Quasar Sim Racing car. What in the world is going on here? Yoni Waters spun around of all the places in the world at the home stretch. That is a bizarre one, this. 
Oh my goodness! Cyandra and Peter on the final lap of this 2.4 hour race. They just make contact with each other. Somehow, some way, I do not understand how, but they're still on the track. Now, Andrew though, goes to the outside. This is his opportunity. They're going side by side, heading into Mulsanne corner. Who's got the edge? And with the nose up ahead. Oh my goodness! Goes to the outside. Does he run wide? No, he doesn't. It's a flat drag race, heading off Mulsanne corner. And I'm almost losing Here my voice, but so be it. Here he comes around the outside, Sayandra, and makes the move for the lead. Wow. The cap, Peter. It is seven <gasps> thousandths of a second. What is seven thousandths of a second? You can literally do nothing in seven thousandths of a second. Oh my god. That has to be the picture that symbolizes the Porsche Sport Carrera Cup. Wow, take a picture of it, take a screenshot, put it on social media, tell the world about it. This one, well, this one belongs in the iRacing Top 10 of the month. Yeah, indeed, Bastian Martler competing in the AM category, not having the best of starts right there. Mm. And what's happened to the AXA car of Kevin Nielsen, championship competitor, Peter? That looks like a hardware failure. That can't be happening on his own merit. Because Dylan Burst is under some tremendous pressure from Thomas Gulda Lion as Harwood literally takes off into air. That, see, if, if you want to send a car into space, Elon Musk, that is how you do it. You don't need to strap it onto a rocket. That's that's too costly. Not flinched once. But look at this one! Justin Ray forcing oh, a move no. and no! It ends in the most unfortunate fashion. More on that later. It's going so Tastalen has got a move for the lead. But now, here we go. One final R this season. We shall be back in the winter but for now this is it end race on pole positions viking in p number two here we go ladies and gentlemen for one last time green 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 race number two is on here at ctmp maxim ramstein forcing the issue on the very first lap <laughs> this is oh. amazing isn't it contact made the racecraft guys in the wall Schulte Wisterman is also falling down and this is a golden opportunity for the sim racing Loft Volantica to make a position up. What in the world is happening here, Peter? Oh, don't tell me it's a self-spin. Don't tell oh, me it's no. a self-spin at the slowest part of the circuit. Oh, that is excruciating. That reminds me of Max Biaggi's slow crash at the Czech Republic Grand Prix back in 2005 or something. Slowest corner of the circuit. And a self error that is painful. I don't have to worry about that. But Violate, Violate oh, in the gravel. Violate, I'm no. so sorry, Peter, for cutting you off right there. But Quinton Violate made a move on Maxim Ramstein, but it did not work. Turn one, that's what I said at the top of the broadcast. It is so easy to carry, too much speed right there. Violate learning it out the hard way, and with that. It's not nothing mentioned, nothing gained. He loses a spot to one Kevin Nielsen. Well, exactly. This is one battle I have been waiting to watch since the very first round. Because we saw brief flirtations of this battle between them. We'll speak about that later because, oh, Alexei Nazov, Peter, has got a slowdown penalty. He cut the corner at the Variante Alta Chicane. Which everyone does, to be honest, but this time out, iRacing gave him a penalty, a slowdown, and it's happened at the worst possible place because it's compromised his entry into Rivatsa and hence his exit onto the long front stretch. He was fourth, he's now in ninth. Outside, outside line for Amstein, white flag up in the air. This is the last chance for him to make the move, and so he does, but not to his avail. Ramstein has not got his nose up ahead so far, until now that is, they make contact, they touch doors, but now it's still not done yet. <laughs> this is the beauty of Suzuka, the S's just allow you to cooperate, but Kevin Nielsen just slams the door shut and says, Maxime, mate, let me take the championship, you do everything in Sebring, I can't be bothered. Coming towards the Degners. You can see how close it is. You can literally feel the tension. It is palpable at this stage. Oh! And now, they make contact. Now oh, he attacks. Robertson to the inside line. Robertson to the lead as well. Itzioglu tries to fight back by going on the inside line. Yet again for this one. It is intense door-to-door -door action. And quite frankly, this is what the Porsche Sport Carrera Cup is all about. 
Yeah, he is driving a Porsche the way you should drive a Porsche, completely sideways. Barney the flagman has waved the white flag. This is it. This matters. The final slot for the consolation race. Who gets it? Now, anger to the outside line, and indeed he holds it off quite well. But the cutback, he blocks it off, does he? No, he does not, because Ward gets it. And look at this, Matthias Burke coming in there as well. Oh, that's, oh. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Can you believe it? I can't. To put this into context, they are your championship leaders, folks. You have to have a driver swap in the series. It's in the rules, it's in the norms. If Matt Stocks can't join the server, that's a clear drive to a penalty for them. Team Hersing with the championship leaders could be pushed further back. Oh goodness me, that my uh, Stefan, that this is absolutely insane. I can't seem to fathom what could happen if Matt cannot quite join the server. Look at the gap. It is equal. Mac Performance and Hersingwell are equal. The RSR 56 car, by keeping Hersingwell behind, are just making it better for Team Mac Performance, who thought at the end of the first race that their championship is done. I have no clue about which way this race is going to swing. It is not done yet. At the final lap, it is Nielsen who's got the nose up ahead, but ramps into the outside line. Can he have better traction? No, he cannot. At the end of the feature race, Kevin Nielsen is your race winner, and wow. Kevin Nielsen is the brand new Porsche Sport Carrera Cup champion. Take a bow. Oh, it has to be <laughs> Fernando Alonso's sandwich paper gate. I mean, who has a sandwich paper stuck in their brake nuts of all places in the world? It, imagine, right? A multi... It reminds me of those meme templates that we have. Who's going to win a multi-million dollar hyper-developed Formula 1 race car versus one sandwich paper wrapper boy? That, that kind of <laughs> stuff. And you know who won in the end? It was the sandwich wrapping paper. Massive salute, but... Jeez, that must have been frustrating, right? I it mean, must next... have been. E even more so, given that, you know, not... The, you know that it was it wasn't that the circuit was full of fans it, it wasn't exactly it was reduced to maybe 10 percent of capacity you know people who sort of had the uh, you know the vaccine passport as we call it that you know they had taken the vaccine and hence could attend and from what i could see in the television screens there were barely any fans so yeah you know i'm, I'm sure there must be one fan wondering that yes it was my rapper that got <laughs> into fernando alonso for for all for all we know I mean, exactly. It's guys just throw the wrapper in the dustbin. It's not that hard. I mean, if you're a and if you're a Fernando Alonso fan, that must have broken your heart realizing, oh, that's my sandwich wrapper. But again, that's <laughs> who would have thought, right? Of all the weird retirement lists, I mean, the dumb ways to retire that that kind of a list can be made of a sandwich wrapping paper in your brake ducts, and yeah, it just raised his brake temperatures. The car couldn't sustain it, but. It's amazing, Kunal. So many millions of dollars, so many man hours spent into developing, and just not any man hours, some of the best brains in the world. How could they have ever forecasted something like this? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it the most satisfying feeling in the world when you have the best of build ups for any particular event, let alone an amazing Formula One race, and then it just tends to satisfy the hell out of you? What? A Grand Prix that was. I'm still buzzing. And in case you're wondering throughout the video, why is this man still shouting? Why is he so pumped up? It's just a race. It's not me. I can't handle it. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Pitch the Podium and the Inside Line Formula One podcast. I feel good. I feel good today. And I was confused about how to feel because it was just an amalgamation of so many different stories, so many different narratives coming into perspective. I think let's focus on the positives. Welcome to the Bahrain, the, not the Bahrain Grand Prix, the Sakir Grand Prix GP. It's even, I'm so excited, I can't even remember which race it was at the end. <laughs> but what a race it was. Uh, as always, your hosts, myself, Samuel Arora, and Kunal Shah here with me. And Kunal, you know the fun part? In our Pits to Podium Grand Prix prediction competition, not one person out of the very significant number of people that participate every single week, not one person got the top three correct. Can you blame them at all? <laughs> I was having this thought late in the night about the nature of Formula One and where the sport is going. I thought, yeah, it, it perhaps does get a bit too boring with Mercedes winning all the time. But when they don't win, the value of that victory seems also bigger because you've scaled an even bigger opposition. 
in this case. And what a story it is. Let's come to Racing Point and Sergio Perez very, very firstly. George Russell, we shall come to him and the disappointment later on. But come to think of it, Kunal, life just writes some brilliant stories. Uh, it, they've been together for such a long time. 2014, the first time Sergio Perez came to Force India. Bit of a rebound that after a rather failed McLaren move. And it went for so long with a couple of podiums here and there. There was a, there was a genuine feel that when no, none of the big teams perform, Checo Perez and Force India, then of course, turning into Racing Point, will always be there to capitalize. Then of course, all the crisis with the money came out, Sergio Perez sent the team into administration. They've been to everything. They've been through hell and beyond with this team and this relationship. And just as it's about to end, that's when they get their first victory, both the team and the driver. My dad, who usually does not get very emotional for sport, he literally almost had tears in his eyes. It was such an amazing story, such a brilliant one. And it could be made worse for the fact that Checo could no longer be on the grid next year. I, I, I don't know. That's what sports make you feel. Sports makes you feel, doesn't it? Just, just so many emotions all together. His way. But next up, we have an interesting point. Again, see, it's a repetition with Kimi Raikkonen. You cannot make a list of quirky moments without having Kimi Raikkonen in it at least twice. Here's he here. Here's him here thrice. Now, uh, this funny moment we didn't see in the race itself, but also, but we saw it in one of Formula One's. Is, Formula, what is Formula One's? Is? Goodness, that's a quirky moment for you. <laughs> but in one of Formula One's preview videos for the season where they asked the drivers, why did you choose the number you chose? And it's a lovely way that Formula One inculcated this canal because we saw, I think it was Charles Leclerc saying that I wanted seven. I think another one of the drivers, Bottas, saying that I wanted number seven. And they shared their emotional stories about, hey, I like this number. I've wanted this all along. A footballer used to wear this number. And then comes Kimi Raikkonen. Can you tell our dear listeners and viewers, Kunal, what Kimi Raikkonen <laughs> said for hogging up a number that two other potential future world champions wanted to take? He <laughs> said I was asked to choose a random number and I just chose seven very randomly. So. <laughs> Kimi Raikkonen, what an absolute legend. What do you make of this? It's clearly not a gimmick. It's, it's real impact on the race. It is indeed. I mean, I like the fact that the fans are more involved than ever in the races. Because previously, when you sit at home in the TV, you feel, oh, that's so far away. Oh, I'll ne never be able to in be involved in the races. 6,171 kilometers away is where <laughs> we are right now. Yeah. But so, you're just one little button away from yeah, having an influence. We can influence the race, in fact, because it gives you an extra power boost for five seconds in the race. And that can virtually decide whether you're the winner or the loser because let's say you're in a crucial condition say you need to win the race to win the championship and you're second and you need to pass the guy ahead to win and if you have the support of your fans thanks to the fan boost you can just get ahead you can win the championship and that all boils down to the fact that you had the extra power boost and the person ahead did not so well, it can change things quite a lot witty group of institutions founded and promoted by renowned educationist couple Dr. Vinay Jain and Dr. Rena Jain is proud to present Witty International School, Borivli West. X1 Racing Esports made a good first impression on the people of India. With the help of Esports, X1 Racing has started a revolution in the Indian motorsport industry. A revolution which aims to make motorsport mainstream in India. Previously, we showed you the impact that X1 Racing Esports had on the masses. On this episode, we shall race into the future with X1 Racing Esports. Having taken the X1 Racing Rush to five cities in India, it was finally time for the capital, Delhi, to get its share of the X1 Racing experience. The city of Delhi has a very close affinity to motorsport. The Bud International Circuit, India's most popular racing track, is situated in Delhi. The Bodh International Circuit is also one of the venues for X1 Racing and the X1 Racing Esports. 
The people of Delhi were overcome with excitement and got to try an all new virtual racing experience which they were not accustomed with. After a lot of practice and preparation, the 18 finalists were poised to give it their all while vying for the coveted prize. With a crowd of over 40,000 people cheering the e-racers, the race was well for open for participation to everyone for free. The idea was for the participants to experience and try their hand at virtually racing a car. The top three racers from each city were selected on the basis of a competition format and given the prestigious chance to represent their city at the grand finale in Delhi. Right then, here you are at the end of my showreel and I hope that you had a really good time watching some of my best work. And in case you're wondering, well, this guy is actually pretty good. I actually want him to host my TV show or host my live event or commentate on my sports event or anything quite like that on the surface of the earth. You would be wondering, well, how do I contact someone? How do I get in touch with him? And that's very, very simple. So check out the description of this video. I've got my email address attached right there. And you can mail me for any inquiries or any bookings or anything quite like that one. And I'll be happy to see which way things go. So folks, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you sometime soon.